So I'm out with Mickey right now. She needs to get a skirt for her second birthday weekend. Her birthday was Tuesday. So we took her out, we being the family, we took her out on last weekend. But this weekend, her friends are taking her out. So she's, I'm with her right now. She wants to run to H&M to get a skirt for tonight. And then I'm going ice skating with Miranda and Cans. So that's gonna be really, really fun. And then we have birthday drinks for our friend Mackie later on tonight. But I'm excited to go ice skating. I feel very like winter wonderland girly, but like I don't do that much color in my wardrobe. So it's like neutral, neutral, which I'm a fan of. But I'm excited, it should be fun. And I'm going to the rink on, the one in Central Park on like 60 something Street and Fifth Ave. I've never been to that one before. Growing up, we always went to the rink on one, like 110 in Central Park, if you know about that one there, then that's when I usually used to go to as a kid. But we're going to the one on Fifth Ave this time. So it should be really fun. The weather's not too bad. It's like cloudy, but it's like 50. So I'm wearing like double layers of like tights and this really big sweater. So hopefully I'll be okay. And like, I know I'm always cold and the girls were making fun of me already. They were literally like, Trisha's definitely wearing a parka. And I'm like, I'm not wearing a parka. I'm just wearing, you know, thermal leggings and like a furry hat and a really big sweater. Sue me, I don't like being cold. <laughs> Just sold out all the floors. Take me on a trip, I'd like to go someday. Take me to New York, I'd like to see LA. Oh, yeah. I really want to come kick it with you. You'll be on your you boy. Okay, let's go. I haven't ice skated in like well over 10 years. I'm surprised. You're still doing very well. Got this is PK. Don't like his baggy jeans, but I'ma like what's underneath it. And no, I ain't been to FIA. I heard the Cali never rains in New York's wide awake. First, let's see the West End. I'll show you to my bedroom. I'm liking this American boy. American boy. Take me on a trip, I'd like to go someday. Take me to New York, I'd love to see LA. I really want to come kick it with you. situation and just like a little life update for me so let's start first some updates one i got my second holes pierced girl you don't know how i feel since you've been away oh baby on both sides i think they're so cute so very happy about that i got them done like a month ago at this point healing has been fine no crusties blood pus swelling anything like i'm really chilling right now so Happy about that. Second update, the book series I was reading, Akatar, finished it, all the books that are out so far. Miranda, she's still on the last book, and I got 
tea to start the series and she's obsessed with it too and she's on the last book right now happy to like see her reaction i mean to talk to her about her reaction and like all her thoughts on it but we both love the series if you haven't read the accord of thorns and roses series we like to say it a court of thorns and roses <laughs> that's how we feel like it sounds in our head but if you haven't read that yet read it it's good and i think next on my list is fourth wing miranda said i can't touch that book until she finishes the last book of the akatar series or of what silver flames but she's going real slow y'all and y'all saw this went last time so we're gonna see we're going to see but really really loved that entire series it was phenomenal if you're into fantasy romance or if you've never even read it before i would I would definitely recommend. Oh, another update. I'm coming up on the end of my contract with my current agency. That's what's happening. So <laughs> um, the closer we get to the end is the more I can share with you guys. So that's happening. <laughs> and yeah, I think those are my like my main updates right now. Is it? Yeah, I think so. Okay, great. <laughs> Now that I've gotten like the basic things that I just need to update you on out of the way Now I want to share with you guys a little bit about where I'm at. I haven't done this in a while I can't remember the last time I made a video like this, but it just feels like it's time. So that's what we're doing So I have recome to terms with the fact that the things I uncovered in therapy aren't just healed and gone because I acknowledged them in therapy I know crazy and each time I'm faced with this reality, I go through a cycle of emotions that usually start off with like frustration and anger, but I end up at relief. And I kind of want to talk you through how I bring myself from here to here. And really this video is more sort of a reminder for me because I feel like I go through this process like, or this cycle like quarterly at this point. And so this is really a reminder for me when I'm working through my triggers and really for anyone else who resonates or who can resonate when they're going through the same things. So during my first or earliest sessions of therapy, um, my therapist, she knew that I was really into astrology and really into spirituality and so was she. So she assigned me to go look up my Chiron and she assigned this to me because at the time I was in a space where I was feeling lots of things but didn't know how to identify or process them or anything of that nature. And I was also having really strong reactions to changes that were happening in my life and didn't really know how to process or understand why that was either. So she thought that this would help and it did. <laughs> so for those who don't know, your Chiron in astrology represents like your deepest core wounds. It explains how they manifest in your life and how to heal them once you acknowledge and address them pretty much. This isn't like a super like astrology like woo woo type video, it's just, just if you're intrigued enough, you should look into your Chiron because it'll explain a lot. But Chiron is just like another placement in your birth chart. So like your sun, rising moon, like all that stuff. Chiron's one of those placements. So my Chiron is in Scorpio and Chiron in Scorpio is the wound of control. And this specifically is a deep trauma that you carry around without really knowing what it is. And that's because it mostly stems from past life traumas. So examples of how Chiron and Scorpio manifest in your day-to-day -day life, for those who have that placement, is a total lack of boundaries, inner negative self-talk that's projected onto you and others. And that's usually just the person attempting to run from the fears that the wound creates. People with this placement take a really, really long time to trust damn near anyone. Trust issues are like a really huge part of this specific placement. And most notably, but the Chiron placement in general is that these wounds take at least your entire lifetime to heal, like at the minimum. Okay, so now that you have like a general understanding of what Chiron is, let's bring it back to me. <laughs> so all the, the ways that I just said that Chiron and Scorpio manifest in a person's life, that and like more is what I spent my almost two years in therapy kind of like unpacking and understanding and attempting to heal. I've talked about this on my channel before, but I was doing this in therapy before she and my therapist decided that I was pretty much equipped enough with the tools that I needed to actually move through life and work through triggers as they come on my own. Like she didn't think I needed her anymore pretty much based on what I was showing in therapy, which is great. And I did agree with her, but you know, I miss her. <laughs> so I'm bringing this up because I find that my initial reaction when I'm triggered by something that I thought I had already moved on from is frustration. When things that I've already unpacked and worked through like fear of judgment and, and abandonment wounds and you know the fear of trusting people things like that that i felt that i had already worked through when something triggers them or when they rear their heads again i can't even lie my first reaction is really like anger and disappointment in myself but once i allow myself to feel those feelings i remember what my therapist has taught me what learning about my chiron has taught me and it's that healing is a lifelong journey it's not a one-stop shop <laughs> that just disappears because you addressed it. That's just not how this works. You have to keep actively doing the work as you move through life. And once I'm able to get out of the feeling all the feelings space and remind myself of that point, things always come back into perspective for me. 
Now that I addressed that, I was journaling the other day. I was like meditating and journaling the other day because we just had, what, the second eclipse? It was in Taurus. Yes, I was journaling and I wanted to impact some limiting beliefs that had come up after I'd recently faced some triggers. And so usually before that, like I journal, I meditate to really like, just to like work through them, you know? And a lot of them were coming from a place of once I heal this, then I can move on to the next step. Or once I master or complete this level of healing, then I can move forward into the next phase of my life. But waiting to pursue certain goals or ideas until I've healed will only end with me having wasted my life. Because again, healing is a lifelong journey. So as I'm journaling, I'm like thinking just through like dreams and passions and goals and just things that I desire for my life. And I realized that those things have been constant and consistent since I was a child. And so I personally believe that that is because those are things that I'm meant to experience. And that's essentially the life that I'm meant to live in this lifetime. Like that's what I believe, but I've delayed certain things where things have been delayed by a higher power because instead of walking through life and kind of just trusting where my spirit wants to lead me, I led with my fears without even realizing it, you know? Putting certain contingencies and limits on what I could do and when I could do it was me leading with my fears without even realizing it. And it's not really my fault. I mean, like I'm going, going through this lifetime for the first time as we all are. So it's not my fault and it's not your fault if you realize you're doing the same things. It's just something to be aware of. And honestly, I believe things happen in divine timing anyway. So it's happening the way it's supposed to happen regardless. But like, you get what I'm saying, right? I hope you get what I'm saying. <laughs> so for me through journaling and you know my meditations and using the tools that I've learned in therapy and also the things I've learned through my own spiritual practice, I find that each time I'm able to work through um, new triggers that come up without attaching myself to the feelings that they bring up, I find that the trust that I have in myself, like my mind, outside of the fear of my spirit and my body is that much stronger because of it. It really reinforces what I've already learned that again, healing is a lifelong journey. I cannot say that enough. I was talking to Vanessa about this earlier. Like no matter how much healing work you do, like there's always something new to learn. There's always something for you to process because you're going through life, you're having new experiences. And we're just really learning as we go. Like we've never done this before. And for me, doing the work to become more comfortable, surrendering and letting go of the need to kind of have everything figured out before I take the next step or before I take that leap of faith, I believe that it's opening me up to receive all the things that are ready to come into my life. So I had a great journaling session. <laughs> I just wanted to share that with you guys because again, like I said, like this really, this happens a lot. And I think that the cycle of me being triggered by something I thought I healed and being upset and frustrated. Frustration comes from, again, the need to control and feeling like, well, I should have had this handled already. So why it's coming up again? Again, Chiron, Scorpio, wound of control. It all comes back to that. And so just having this realization and honestly making this video as a reminder for myself that it's gonna, it's gonna happen again. I'm going to be triggered again by something. Something's gonna come up again. It's gonna have me feeling things I thought I was, you know, done and dealt with, but I shouldn't attach myself to those feelings because the reality is like, that's just part of the human experience. That's just what happens when we chose to come back down here to earth again. So I'm wanting to surrender, I'm wanting to let go. And in doing so, I am I feel like establishing a deeper sense of trust with myself as I, you know, continue to work through these things. So that I'm really proud of. And I really hope this video kind of validates you if you feel the same way, explains some things to you and just makes you feel like you're not crazy for feeling the way you're feeling. You know what I mean? Like it just, we're just humans. <laughs> So if you're interested, you should definitely look into your Chiron. I feel like it will explain a lot. I already did this for some of my friends and looked into theirs and like shared it with them. And they were like, and I was like, girl, I know. Look into your Chiron. I'm telling you, look into your Chiron. <laughs> but besides that, I love you guys. This was a good check-in and comment down below if you know your Chiron or if you're looking into your Chiron. So yeah, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.